In this tutorial, we are going to look at one of the newer features of JavaScript. This was included in the ECMAScript 2020 standard. We will be looking at optional chaining and when it might be used. Before we get started, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description. Also, my website has a list of all the tutorials I've published. There are over 200 now. The description also has a link to Patreon if you'd like to support this channel and get access to the code files. And remember, there's also a link to earn script. The last few script rewards that I've done for tutorials were completely used up, so it's becoming more popular. So I'll be increasing that amount with this one. And remember, you can use script to get free courses. All right, let's jump into the topic. Now, here in the U.S. this week, we are celebrating Thanksgiving. So before I jump right into it, I want to give thanks to all those that participate in this channel, the viewers, the contributors. Thanks for what you contribute and thanks for your continued support. It keeps me doing this. Optional chaining utilizes a new operator that helps simplify conditionals that may be required when working with objects. I've also seen this called conditional invocation when used with methods. I think the best way to understand it is to experience it. So let's look at an example first. Now, I've set up some objects already here. I have character one. You can see what I have within this object. There are objects inside of objects. So the settings is also an object. And inside of settings, there's characteristics, which is another object. And so objects inside of objects. And that's where I've found this optional chaining to be most useful. Character two, similar thing, but there's some things missing. For example, in characteristics, notice that speed is not included. And then character three, all we have is an ID. We don't have anything else down here. Now I have three console log statements just to give us an idea of when this optional chaining might be used. The first one displays the speed for the first character, char1. So it uses the dot operator to access the settings object inside of char1 and to access the characteristics object and then the property of speed. Same thing for these other two. Now remember, uh, character two here doesn't have a property of speed. Character three doesn't have a settings object, a characteristics object, or the property of speed. So let's see what we get back. Just going to go out here and we'll take a look at the console. We get six for the speed on the first console log statement. The second one we get undefined. Remember, that was the one that had the two sub objects, but didn't have the property speed. The third, we get a type error. And that's because it's trying to read a property characteristics of undefined. So what is it telling us there? Well, it's trying to go to settings. Settings is not there, so that's undefined. And then it tries to read characteristics of undefined. That gives us a type error. Doesn't even get to speed. Doesn't even get that far. All right. Now, how would you deal with this with what you know about JavaScript today? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. We could do a lot of if statements. That would allow us to deal with it. Check to see if the object exists before we move further in the object, or we can use the double ampersands to uh, check it as we move along as well. For example, I can do the same console log statement here, and instead of getting it to error out, I can get it to return undefined using double ampersands, and I would do something like this. Uh, let me go ahead and copy this part inside here and then right here I would do double ampersands and then we would check for a little bit more we go to characteristics this time and then one more double ampersand and just remove that speed and we check for the whole thing so the way this works, this is another shortcut in JavaScript, but the way it works is if this is true, it will go to this. If this is true, it will go to 
that. If one of those gets false, and this one's going to get false right here, it will return undefined. So instead of trying to go farther and accessing this off of an undefined, it will stop here and just display undefined. Okay, now I need to comment this out or we'll never get to that fourth console log statement because we got that type error. So let me go ahead and save that and then we'll refresh this. And so that gives us undefined. Now with this new feature, this optional chaining, we can do that exact same thing, but it's simpler. Okay, I'm going to copy this again here. Now the optional chaining operator is a question mark in front of the dot, in front of the period. So it would look like this. I'm going to put a question mark in front of that, a question mark in front of this one, and a question mark in front of that one. Okay, now we have four console log statements. Let me just save that. And we see that displays undefined as well. Now, a few tutorials ago, I talked about another feature of ES2020 which is knowledge coalescing. And we can actually use that together with this optional chaining. Let's say instead of displaying undefined, we wanted to display something else. Like say we want to display it doesn't have a speed value or something like that, or speed not found. So this is the knowledge coalescing, the double question marks, and then speed not found, we can put right there. So if this ends up being undefined, which it will, we saw it when we logged it to the console, it will display this instead. That's what our knowledge coalescing is going to do here. So let me go ahead and save that. And we see speed not defined. Now this optional chaining, this can work with methods as well. Let me show you an example of that. I'm going to copy in a new object here. And as you can see, I have commented out a method. There's a method I put into this object that I've commented out. So let's say that we wanted to invoke that method. I'm just going to invoke it inside of a console log statement so we can get the results on the console. What's going to happen? Because that method does not exist, what is going to happen? Well, I think you figured it out we're going to get another type error. This is not a function. That's basically what it's telling us. We're trying to invoke something that is not even a function. Well, we can use the optional chaining that new operator with this. If we simply put before the parens for invoking that method, if we simply put the operator, the question mark dot like that, now notice what happens. We get undefined, all right? So instead of getting an error, we basically get undefined back. Now this can also be used with square brackets. So if we're trying to access something in an object using square brackets, meaning we need to evaluate some value, uh, we can also use this sort of thing. So let me go ahead. I'm going to copy this much again. Getting quite a few lines here. And let's say that uh, settings is actually a string and we need to evaluate that in order to access that particular object. Okay. So we would do that inside of square brackets like that. Now notice that we still use the optional chaining in front of it and it still works just as well with those square brackets. Let me put the last part here, close off my console log statement. We save that and now we'll get another undefined. So we're getting lots of undefines here on the console. All right, so that's a couple of applications of this optional chaining just to be aware of. So here we have a method, here we have a variable or in this case a string that needs to be evaluated to in order to determine what we're grabbing from the object. And we put that inside of square brackets and we can still use the optional chaining for that. So an example of using optional chaining 
that is available in ECMAScript 2020. Now remember, this is a very recent release. So you need to use a compiler or you need to make sure you're developing for the latest browsers. Now, before we finish here, I haven't emphasized yet that we've been using an example here when it comes up undefined. But the purpose is that you can use it in a situation where you don't know if it's going to be undefined or not. So, for example, we need to use it in all of these cases if we're not sure whether something exists in the object or not. That way it protects us from getting an error, yet if the data does exist, then it goes ahead and displays it, as we'll see. And also down here, I'm going to uncomment this uh, method here. So that method will invoke if it does exist. If it doesn't exist, it will get the undefined. All right, so let's just take a look at that. So we see we still get the six. It finds it if it's there. If it's not, we get back undefined. If the method exists, it invokes it. If not, we get back undefined. All right, please hit the like button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses that I've provided in the description section. Click that bell button to be notified about new releases. I really try to release a new tutorial each week. And once again, thanks for watching.